All right, so I'm gonna trim this piece. First thing I need to do is I need to make sure it's leather hard. I should also check the interior curve so I know what shape that interior is. Leather hard means I should be able to uh, shift the, the clay a little bit but not leave fingerprints and it should be a little bit soft up here at the top. Now before I stick it onto the wheel I need to make sure it's centered. So I'm going to start the wheel spinning and I'm going to use a needle tool horizontal to the parallel to the wheel head and let it touch just on one side. Now that left a mark from about here to about here over on this side. That means the clay is a little bit further to that side so I'm going to push it away from there just a bit. I can erase my line like that and check again. Now if you don't center your, once it makes a line all the way around, uh, that means it's centered. If you don't center your piece, you can still trim a foot, but your foot will be crooked on your piece, which you probably don't want. I'm going to use some wads of wet clay pushed into the wall of the pot. I'm rolling them so they're not rough. That rough stuff sometimes sticks, this rough stuff here sometimes sticks on the pot. First thing I'm going to do is use the large loop tool here and I'm going to clean up the bottom. The bottom has some roughness, sometimes a little bit of paper stuck onto it. I'm holding the loop tool so that the clay comes into the blade, not pushing, not dragging across the top, but using that blade. I can also come around the outside, particularly if I didn't undercut it very much, or if it got rough from fingerprints, and I can clean that up. Next, I want to add, I want to draw myself a line for where my foot's going to be. I want it to be about two-thirds of the way out on the pot, and when I'm first starting, I want to leave extra space here on the foot. I'll be cutting away everything in here and everything out here. So this entire inside space and this outside space. If I leave myself some extra thickness there, I can make a mistake and not run into that. So if the clay is the right thickness, I should be cutting it off in these big long strings, which sometimes you have to clean off the floor. Uh, and. Uh, Remember that your wrist can twist. Your trimming tool uh, can uh, come around this curve. Lots of times when people are first doing this, they end up cutting straight down and then kind of leave a corner right about here. You want to get that clay off of there. You want the inside curve that we looked at before to match the outside curve. Uh, you want the wall thickness at the top to be the same as it is down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to switch to my small loop tool and I'm going to change the angle. I'm cutting into the side and then I can switch and cut up the, the edge here. Every once in a while get your eyes down low. I lean over, you could just get up so that you can see the side view because the top view looks different than the view from the, from the side or from the camera there. You can also use the trimming tool to create some decoration. I'm going to, I've got a little rough edge here that's going to cut up the table once it's dry and fired, so I'm going to hold my trimming tool at a 45 degree angle and clean that up. I can use my finger, or a damp finger, or a sponge to clean that up. Get away a little bit more of that, I think. Now I'm going to use the corner of the trimming tool, the loop tool, in the middle, and I'm going to move myself out until I hit that line. I don't want to go past that line. Some people actually start on the outside edge and work their way in because then they can't cut past that line because they're starting at the line. If you use the flat part of the trimming tool, you smooth it out. If you use the thin or the corner of the trimming tool, you can leave a little spiral like that. And this curve should line up with this curve, making this foot look like it's just been added on. And then I'll get that, that rough bit off of the inside here. Use my loop tool at a 45 degree angle. If that stuff bothers you, stop the wheel and get it out of there. Otherwise you can just get, a, get it out of there once you're finished. Got a little bit more thickness to get out of the middle. Then once you're done, you should uh, put your mark on. I've got a stamp here that I'll put on right side up, hopefully. And then if I pick this off of here, I can check and make sure that my wall thickness is the same throughout, that my piece sits on the wheel head well. If it doesn't, you can give it a little oops, slam like that. You can rock it around to compress that edge. And that's it.